transcending history and the world, a tale of souls and swords eternally retold. Soul Edge, a legendary sword and devourer of souls. Buried in the darkest reaches of history, it was brought back to light in the 16th century. The notorious pirate Cervantes claimed the sword as his own, setting everything into motion. Soul Edge adapted itself to its new owner by splitting into two. Possessed by the evil weapons, Cervantes began a bloody reign of terror, slaying all those seeking the swords without prejudice. Cervantes was eventually undone. Under the protection of Hephaestus, the god of smithing, a female warrior named Sophitia was able to destroy one of the swords. Shards of the blade flew and lodged into her body, causing near mortal wounds. Seeing his chance, Cervantes raised his sword to deliver the final blow. Suddenly, there appeared a ninja known as Taki, who rescued the wounded warrior. Taki defeated Cervantes in a battle to the death before carrying the injured Sophitia away. However, one of Soul Edge's two blades still remained. Perhaps it was fate. The blade fell into the hands of Siegfried, whose mind was twisted and unwell. of rampant evil, the evil seed. No one could have predicted it would become a catalyst for catastrophe across the world. Our story takes place in the 16th century. Welcome to the stage of history retold. Siegfried, let's do this. Mitsurugi. 
for this? Transcending history and the world, a tale of souls and swords eternally retold. Soul Edge, a legendary sword and devourer of souls. Buried in the darkest reaches of history, it was brought back to light in the 16th century. The notorious pirate Cervantes claimed the sword as his own, setting everything into motion. Soul Edge adapted itself to its new owner by splitting into two. Possessed by the evil weapons, Cervantes began a bloody reign of terror, slaying all those seeking the swords without prejudice. Cervantes was eventually undone. Under the protection of Hephaestus, the god of smithing, a female warrior named Sophitia was able to destroy one of the swords. 
Shards of the blade flew and lodged into her body, causing near mortal wounds. Seeing his chance, Cervantes raised his sword to deliver the final blow. Suddenly, there appeared a ninja known as Taki, who rescued the wounded warrior. Taki defeated Cervantes in a battle to the death before carrying the injured Sofitia away. However, one of Soul Edge's two blades still remained. Perhaps it was fate. The blade fell into the hands of Siegfried, whose mind was twisted and unwell. of rampant evil, the evil seed. No one could have predicted it would become a catalyst for catastrophe across the world. Our story takes place in the 16th century. Tragedy befell this place. Ling Shen Su Temple was a famous martial arts school in the far reaches of China. It was there Killick learned to master the staff after he was abandoned as a child. Killick ate and slept with the other students and began his training at a young age. Despite this, he established a family-like bond with just one other student, Shang Len, a young girl who was like an elder sister to him. Dedicated to the way of the sword, she looked after Killick as if they were siblings. So close was their bond that when one felt happy or sad, the other would feel the same. Together they studied and grew as warriors. Years passed by. Killick's skill earned him a place as a teacher, an honorable position for one so young. Throughout the ages, Ling Sheng Su Temple had kept hold of the three sacred treasures, Krita Yuga, Devapara Yuga, and Kali Yuga. Killick's years of arduous training earned him the title of rightful bearer of the staff, Kali Yuga. Likewise, Shang Len was also designated bearer of Devapara Yuga, a sacred mirror. Our story begins on the night before the ritual for passing the treasures on to their new masters. Shang Len, can I ask you something? Sure. How come you were chosen to bear Devapara Yuga? I thought you'd get Krita Yuga. After all, you've dedicated your life to the sword. <sighs> Kalek, this is not easy for me to talk about, but I'm going to try. The Krita Yuga, it's no longer at Ling Shang Su. The sword has been gone for more than a decade. All that's left is the Kali Yuga and the Devapara Yuga. Really? Surprised? Well, there's more. The one who stole the Krita Yuga was none other than my father. 